Well, good morning. morning. Beloved, if we've not met before, my name is Nathan Lonsdale Bledsoe. I'm the senior pastor here at St. Stephen's. It is wonderful to be with each and every one of you on this wonderful Sunday. We've got a lot going on. So it's Pentecost Sunday, hence the fun red all over the place. We've got red flowers and red pulpit decorations. I'm in my white robe with a red stole. Pentecost is a day where we remember how much God loves us and comes to us to help us talk to each other across what seem like insurmountable differences. What an important message to get in the midst of the world we live in today. We're also celebrating a baptism. We're celebrating communion. It's going to be a jam-packed, wonderful Sunday to worship God and celebrate what God is up to in our midst. Uh, There's also, as I just saw someone motion, a luncheon after church so that we'll continue the celebration even beyond our worship time. So it's really just a great day to celebrate together. Um, A couple of links are about to pop up on screen with me. Uh, The first one is a link for our folks who are worshiping online with us. Uh, Friends, we believe that worship connects us with God and with each other, even when we can't all be in the same room. And we want to celebrate that connection with you. If you're worshiping with us virtually, take a minute to follow that link and sign in. There's a place on that form to leave us a note if you need to get a message to us in the office and that we can celebrate your presence with us even from afar. The second link is for everyone. Uh, It is a link to our bulletin. It's also on the QR codes on the ends of the pews and around the room. Everything you need to participate in worship will be on screen as we go through, Uh, but that's helpful if you like to read ahead, if you want a little bit more information, if you want some of our announcements of what's going on. Uh, Additionally, on that same page with the bulletin, there's a place that you can sign in as a visitor. If you're interested in what happens in this church today, you want to learn more about what it means to be a part of St. Stephen's or how to connect with us, you can just click a link there and fill out a form. That's also, there are pewback cards that have the visitor information as well uh, if you want to fill one out the old-fashioned way. Uh, Friends, in just a minute, we'll have a prelude. I invite you to take that time to prepare yourself for worship. Maybe take a deep breath, say a quick prayer, wave to and greet the folks around you as a way of passing the peace. Uh, As our acolytes light the candle and our prelude is played, come, let us worship God together. Please stand in body and spirit and join me in the call to worship. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have being. Bless the Lord, O my soul. 
Bless the Lord. May my meditation be pleasing to God, for I rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. Amen. so good to be here with you today. Um, If we haven't met before, my name is Heather Velez, and I am the pastor of music and worship here at St. Stephen's. It is lovely to be in person with you here in the room and online with those of you who are joining us on YouTube and Facebook. I would love to enjoy it, invite you, I will enjoy inviting you all to join me in singing. Oh, for a thousand tongues. Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing my great Redeemer's praise, the glories of my God and King, the triumphs of His grace. My gracious Master and my God, assist me to proclaim, to spread through all the earth abroad, the honors of thy name. Jesus, the name that charms our fears, that bids our sorrows cease. Tis music in the sinner's ears, tis life and health and peace. You may be seated. Our first scripture today comes from the book of Acts, chapters 2, verse 1 through 21. When Pentecost Day arrived, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound from heaven like the howling of a fierce wind filled the entire house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be individual flames of fire alighting on each one of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit enabled them to speak. There were, pi- were pious Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. When they heard this sound, a crowd gathered. They were mystified because everyone heard them speaking in their native languages. They were surprised and amazed, saying, Look, aren't all these people who are speaking Galileans, every one of them? How then can each of us hear them speaking in our native language. Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, as well as residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the regions of Libya bordering Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism. Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the mighty works of God in our own language. They were all surprised and bewildered. Some asked each other, what does this mean? Others jeered at them, saying, they're fruit full of new wine. Peter stood with the other 11 apostles. He raised his voice and declared, Judeans and everyone living in Jerusalem know this. Listen carefully to my words. These people aren't drunk, as you suspect. After all, it's only 9 o'clock in the morning. Rather, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young will see visions. Your elders will dream dreams. Even upon my servants, men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will cause wonders to occur in heaven above, and signs on earth below blood and fire and a cloud of smoke. The sun will be changed into darkness and the moon will be changed into blood before the great and spectacular day of the Lord comes. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen. Breathe on me, breath of God, fill me with life anew, that I may love what Thou dost love, and do what Thou wouldst do. Please be seated. 
Please join me now in the prayers of the people. Together, let us pray. For every person, without exception, to know that each of us is a beloved child of God. For reminders each day that the church is yours, God, and not ours. For the knowledge that you, God, are in our neighborhoods, workplaces, and homes, as well as in our church. For the privilege of worshiping you, God, and how it connects us all. For the stories from scripture that transform our own stories, bringing hope, peace, joy, love, and light. Hear our prayers as we pray in silence. <coughs> Being Pentecost, we're going to do the Lord's Prayer a little differently. It's going to be read in two different languages, and then I will start after they finish the first part of it. And so when you hear me say, Our Father, join in with me for the rest of the verse. Padre nuestro que estás en el cielo, Tata nostro care esti in ceruri, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. For we forget those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Beloved, it is now my joy to invite uh, Justin and Lawrence St. Lawrence up with their son Preston for the sacrament of holy baptism. Well, hey, dude. How are you? Let's see how chilly stays. Brothers and sisters in Christ. Through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, and these questions are for Justin's, or excuse me, for Preston's parents because I don't think he's quite ready to answer them himself yet. Do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness? Reject the evil powers of this world and repent of your sin. If so, say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, say, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to all people? If so, say, I do. Will you nurture Preston in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example he may be guided to accept God's grace and love for himself, to profess his faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? If so, say, I will. According to the grace given to you, will you remain a faithful member of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representative in the world? If so, say, I will. Next question is for everybody here because when we go through the beautiful act of baptism, we remember what we've been baptized into. So do you, as Christ's body of the church, reaffirm, bo reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitments to Christ? We do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include Preston now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround him with a community of love and forgiveness that he may grow in his trust of God and be found faithful in his service to others. We will pray for him that he may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. The Lord be with you. 
We'll now say a thanksgiving over the water. Your responses will be sung. The way we'll do it is call and response. So I'll introduce it like this, then put my hands out like this, and you'll sing along. They're short. You'll get them, I promise. If I can sing it, you can sing it. Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those on the ark through water. After the flood, you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt, you led them to freedom through the sea. Their children you brought through the Jordan to the land which you promised. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Sing to the Lord, all the earth. Tell of God's mercy each day. Tell of God's mercy each day. In the fullness of time you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of a womb. He was baptized by John and anointed by your spirit. He called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection and to make disciples of all nations. Declare his work to the nations. Declare Declare his his work work to to the the nations. His glory among the people. His glory among the people. Pour out your Holy Spirit to bless the gift of water and those who receive it, to wash away their sin and clothe them in righteousness throughout their lives, that dying and being raised with Christ, they may share in his final victory. All praise to you, eternal Father. All praise to you, eternal Father. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, Through your Son, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit, who with you and the Holy Spirit, lives and reigns forever, lives and reigns forever. Amen. folks. You want me to hold them or do you want to hold them? Let's see how we do. I'll make the transfer. Hey, buddy. And y'all come stand with me and in a minute I'll have you put a hand on him. Um, It's on screen for me. We've said it several times, but a historic question of the church before we baptize a little one is what name is given this child? Preston Hartman? We baptize you in the name of the Father. I know, it's a little cold. And of the Son. Hi, Papa. And of the Holy Spirit, if you want to put a hand on him. Amen. The Holy Spirit work within you. Yeah, you. That being born through water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. I'm not the guy you were holding when you closed your eyes, huh? (laughs) Amen. Beloved. It is our joy to welcome the newest member of the family of faith, Preston Hartman St. Lawrence. Let's give him a hand. Yeah. Is that too much? Do you want to go back to mom and dad now? Yeah. And we have a little gift from you from our prayer shawl ministry, as well as his baptism certificate in that blue bag. Uh, God bless you, and God bless you, Preston. Amen. Friends, our gospel reading this morning comes to us from the Gospel of John. I'll be reading verses 8 through 17 out of the 14th chapter in the Common English Bible. I invite you to stand in body or in spirit for the reading of the gospel. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father. That will be enough for us. Jesus replied, Don't you know me, Philip? Even after I have been with you all this time, whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I have spoken to you, I don't speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me does his works. Trust me 
when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on account of the works themselves. I assure you that whoever believes in me will do the works that I do. They will do even greater works than these because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask for in my name so that the Father can be glorified in the Son. When you ask me for anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. I will ask the Father and he will send another companion who will be with you forever. This companion is the spirit of truth whom the world can't receive because it neither sees him nor recognizes him. You know him because he lives with you and will be with you. Friends, these are inspired words for beloved people. Lord, transform us through its hearing. You may be seated. I'm going to reach back into contemporary American history a couple decades and see, does anybody remember uh, James Carville and Mary Matlin? Uh, So famous couple, uh, James Carville is from Louisiana and a pretty unique looking human being, we'll say. Uh, Mary Matlin um, and James Carville got together and got married Uh, and have continued to be married. They raised two daughters together who are now in college. They live in New Orleans where they moved from D.C. in 2007 as part of hoping to help rebuild the city of New Orleans. They've written a couple of books together. They've been very public. They both worked for CNN for a while and have since gone on to do other things. And they're particularly notable uh, because they have a loving and faithful marriage and are very, very active in two different political parties in a country that really just has the two that have much say. So James Carville has been a Democratic strategist for most of his life and career. Uh, Mary Matlin has been a Republican strategist for most of her career. In fact, in 1992, uh, they were in charge of a competing campaigns. So James Carville was in charge of Bill Clinton's first campaign for presidency, while Mary Matlin was running George H.W. Bush's re-election campaign. Uh, And in the midst of all of that, they managed to uh, not just love each other, but usually like each other, uh, and have really deep and meaningful, a deep and meaningful relationship. Again, they've raised two daughters together. They continue to be married and love each other. Um, And you know what they don't do? Agree about everything. Um, So today is Pentecost. It's a day where we remember that in the aftermath of the crazy, topsy-turvy story of Jesus Christ's death and resurrection and then reappearing to the disciples in different ways over a period of time and then ascending up to the Father and people feeling like, what are we going to do? How is God going to take care of us if we don't have Jesus to follow around and tell us what to do all the time? Uh, The disciples were gathered together with people who were interested in what had happened uh, from all over the Roman world because there were Jewish people of faith from the farthest parts of North Africa all the way down into Ethiopia, up around the Mediterranean Sea to Spain, and all in between because of them spreading across the empire during uh, all of this time of Roman rule. Uh, So even though many of them probably spoke um, some of their prayers in Hebrew, they spoke different languages because, uh, you know, you speak the language of the people around you most of the time so that you can do business, have a life, whatever else. And so all of the earliest close followers of Jesus, his disciples, the tight-knit group of 12 and the women who weren't always counted but were very much a part of that inner circle and the other folks were from Galilee, um, which as I talk about pretty often, um, they were lake people. And I'm saying that with the kind of condescension some people have about people from by a lake right? Like the Sea of Galilee was a commercial fishing area. It was the country to the fancy folks in Jerusalem. It was people who made a living off of the land and who might not have had the best education or grammar or manners and who spoke this Aramaic dialect that probably sounded kind of like that East Texas drawl sounds to some folks that folks from East Texas run into. And all of a sudden, as 
these people are gathered together and Peter and the other disciples are up there trying to tell them that God still loves them. And well, Jesus said this stuff about God will send somebody to help us, but I don't really know how or what that means. They started to have visions of fire over each of these guys' heads. And this group of people started speaking in all of the languages of the Roman Empire and speaking in all of the different tongues of these people that were gathered together in Jerusalem, as well as if they were native speakers. And everybody around went, these guys from the sticks? What, how do they know my language? There's, there's no language school in Galilee. There's no place for them to have learned how to talk like this or say these things. And they were able to preach the good news of Jesus, of God's expansive and never-ending love for each and every person in language so clear and so obvious that everyone could hear it. Um, fast forward a couple thousand years, human beings have gotten better than we used to be at being able to talk across actual language barriers. I don't know about the rest of you, but uh, I've done some travel in the last few years and on my cell phone, I have an app from Google, and I can do stuff as crazy as hold it up to a menu page written in another language and have it translate into English on my screen. This is a free app. I didn't pay anything for this. Or if you're talking to someone, you can have them talk into your phone, and they can translate it into English for you, and you can do it the other way. Um, you know, you can now watch television and movies from all over the world with subtitles or even overdubbing in the language that you're used to speaking. We've gotten pretty good at talking across the boundaries of language difference. Is there still some stuff we lose or that doesn't work out? Uh, of course there is. I'm sure many of you have heard a sermon at some point about how, well, in Greek there's these different words for different kinds of love. And so when Jesus says, if you love me, then, right. So like sometimes you lose stuff in language translation. It's a common thing. But we're better at communicating with people who speak different languages than we do than we have ever been. You know what we're not good at doing? Communicating with people who watch different news networks than we do very well. <laughs> or people who belong to different organizations than we do very well. Or who continue to vote for someone different than we do. Or whatever else is. You know, I feel like if I could ask God for something in this moment today... It would be a Pentecost of the heart instead of a Pentecost of language, that we might find a common way to speak meaningfully to one another and experience the love that God has that we saw in Jesus, that we see in the Holy Spirit, that we see in people all around us in our lives here and now. And when I catch glimpses of that, I get really, really excited. Um, and for years, and I have talked with Dan a little bit about this, so uh, for those of you who are not in the know about weird denominational things, this past week from Sunday afternoon through Wednesday midday was the gathering of the Texas Annual Conference. So um, because we're really good at naming things in United Methodism, an annual conference is a geographic body. Um, because why wouldn't you call an area annual instead of, you know, regional? Uh, anyways, so the... Texas Annual Conference has an annual, annual conference, uh, you with me still, uh, where we come together and talk about the business of the church. And um, for over 40 years now, the United Methodist Church has been locked in a nasty fight about um, how we interpret scriptures particular to human sexuality and what that means for the future of the church. And I have hoped for longer than I have been in ministry, what if the institutional church could behave like the church in Pentecost and learn how to deeply and meaningfully connect and model for the world that we can be people who have difference of opinions? You know, when I was growing up, people loved to talk about how in the United Methodist Church you had Hillary Clinton and George W. Bush, both active members of United Methodist Churches, both very faithful, loved Jesus, thought very differently about how to do politics, but shared a church, how great a church is that? Um, I want to tell you that the denomination has figured out how to rise to this occasion of being bigger than the divisions we see in our political world, but on an institutional level, I can't tell you that um, because we are in the midst of a schism 
Uh, a lot of great and meaningful connection and good happened at the annual conference, but it was also kind of like being at the first hearing in the midst of some kind of a divorce settlement, right? Where even if this is the best thing for everyone involved, there was pain and heartbreak in the midst of it. Um, but God is not done doing good and meaningful things in the United Methodist Church. Uh, that even if we're splitting a little bit, there will always be a place for people of differing opinions in a church that seeks to be like John Wesley and that we can believe different sorts of things and still love God together and come together and do great work. Uh, and that maybe someday on down the road, we might repent of our sin in the depths of our disagreements and find a way to be church together again, if it has to be a little less structurally tight for a while to get there. Um, but you know what? As painful as all of that is for me and has been for me, and I've been pretty involved in a lot of this stuff for as long as I've been in ministry, I went to annual conference with a lighter and more hopeful heart than I've had for the church in a long time. And let me tell you why. Um, it's not because of anything I said or did, uh, but last Sunday uh, when I preached, I talked pretty passionately and clearly about my understanding that followers of Jesus must stand against gun violence uh, and that it has been too long that we can't be claiming that there's nothing we can do for something that only happens in our culture and not other places. Uh, and I didn't mince words, and I was not particularly gentle. But the conversations I heard in this room after that or in rooms on the side between people that I know have not voted for the same people in 20 or 30 years or more about how we might as people come together and try and solve this horrific issue in our world proved to me that a Pentecost of the heart is in fact possible. That there is a God whose love is so big and expansive that we can disagree about most of how we ought to get somewhere and agree that following God, we've still got to get there together. That we can disagree about how we do a lot of things, about who is right about this or about that, but that we can come together and make meaningful change for Jesus Christ in the midst of this world. The beauty of Pentecost to me is that once a year, we get to gather together, hear a couple of different languages incorporated in the service in some way, celebrate the breadth and diversity of what started as this little band of misfits from this little bitty colony of Rome on the Mediterranean Sea and has become a movement of people across almost every country in the world, across almost every language we could conceive of, who believe that Jesus Christ really was God in person. That the life that he lived and the love that he showed demonstrate to us what it looks like when God shows up in our midst and how we might live together and seek that God. On that first Pentecost, there were city people and country people. There were people with some education and people with none. There were people with money and people with none. There were people with different hues of skin tone, people with all sorts of differences that heard clearly that the love of God was for them and for everyone. And every Pentecost, when we come together as followers of Jesus, we ought to remember that the love of God is for everyone. Another special part of Pentecost to me this year, uh, as I was reminded by Stephen Fisher, is this Pentecost marks one year of us being able to gather in person for worship again. After almost two years in the wilderness of me being a low-budget television producer and learning how to use Final Cut Pro to cut services together, and then Chris and our tech crew coming up with a way to live stream and still preaching to an empty room while we were streaming it online, we have been able to gather in person in this sanctuary for a year as of today. And in that year, we've learned lots of things. Um, we've remembered how important it is to gather together for worship. I think we've learned that as good as the way we do worship is for following Jesus for us, 
We have to think about new ways to reach people who an hour on Sunday morning just doesn't work for anymore and help them to find ways to worship God and be deeply connected to community. We have learned that God is not done with St. Stephen's and God is not done with people who want to follow Jesus no matter how their life or experiences might differ, no matter what it is, they come in expecting that on Pentecost of all days, we ought to remember that Jesus' love is for you and for me and for anyone we might meet, and we're to do everything in our power to make sure they can hear it loud and clear. So my prayer for you and for me is that we truly have a Pentecost of the heart, that we learn to speak the language of love and Jesus that is deeper than any divisions we might have, that provides more meaningful opportunities to connect than we could ever dream of, and that is exactly what God wants us to be doing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, between a baptism and communion and Pentecost Sunday, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on our mission moment before our offering today. I'm going to give it more time next week when we've got a little bit more time to breathe. But just because some folks very faithfully write a communion uh, offering check on the first Sunday of the month, uh, our communion offering this month, no matter whether you give it today or on, what month is it? It's June the 30th um, or anywhere in between, will go to support the work of Wesley Community Center. Uh, it's a longtime community partner of ours. Uh, they're over in the near north side and in closer into the city in Houston. Uh, they provide all kinds of support for um, the very young, uh, the elderly, and everyone in between. Uh, that people might have what they need to flourish in this world. Again, you'll hear more about it next week. It's really a wonderful ministry. Uh, during our time of offering, if you haven't been in worship with us before or in a while, we're not passing plates anymore. You can give online using the link up there, or there's a link in the bulletins. Uh, you can also, if you want to make a gift of cash or check, put it in one of the four plates by our four exit doors on your way out at the end of the service. Uh, but I invite you during our time of offertory music uh, to reflect in your heart on how you might live your life as an offering to God in light of all that God has done for us.
Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Forgot to move one of these up top. So friends, we're now going to move into a time of uh, saying thanksgiving over our communion elements. Um, our responses are sung. Pastor Heather will help me lead them. They're easy, I promise. Again, if I can sing it, you can sing it. Uh, it's easy to follow along. Uh, it's a way to invite God into uh, our hearts as we celebrate this holy mystery. So let us begin our time of thanksgiving over communion. The Lord be with you. give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are 
Blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from a slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all of us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. 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 Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. As those assisting with communion come forward, uh, I'll do some air traffic control instructions. Uh, first and foremost, uh, whether you're a member of this church or any church or no church, if you earnestly want to come and receive this gift from God, you are welcome at the communion table. Uh, we do not uh, deny folks communion. As part of that, in the midst of these strange times, we're doing several things to try and make sure people feel welcome to take communion. If you're not ready to have shared bread and cup with other people yet, but still want communion, uh, we've got these. Our ushers have a tray of them, um, and they can give you one as they come by. If you didn't get one on your way in, want to take communion that way. They'll re release you by row. We'll take communion by intinction, which is a very fancy way of saying one server will tear off a piece of bread and put it in your hand. You can then lightly dip it in the cup of grape juice. If you're ready to take bread but not ready to share in dipping in the same cup as other people, it still counts as communion if you just eat the piece of bread. Uh, so all kinds of options uh, and to make those choices. We ask our servers to wear a mask when they're serving you just to keep uh, folks as safe as possible and ensure that folks that want to come to the table have no stumbling blocks to keep from doing that. Uh, the table is prepared. I invite you to come at the usher's instruction. My last thing, if you're upstairs and you want uh, the bread and juice, you can just kind of come down and join the line whenever. I'll serve the servers. Oh, you've got bread. Perfect. Blood of Christ, shepherd you. 
Check for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you.
for how you come into each and every one of our lives in real and tangible ways and help us to know your love for us is sustaining and real. In Jesus' name, amen. A couple quick announcements before we sing our closing hymn. Uh, the first is that immediately following this service, for anyone who wants to stick around, we've got a spaghetti lunch down in the fellowship hall. So if you're new to this building, you walk down the longest hallway in the city of Houston and you're there. Um, it's a great space, and because we are Methodists who haven't had anything like this in a while, apparently there's is so much dessert that you can all take a really good nap this afternoon and we'll still have dessert left. So it should be a great time. Uh, the second announcement, we've only got two today, um, I invite you to read the bulletin for more information, is that tonight from 5 to 7 we'll have youth uh, as well as our last Great Heights Bible study before we take a little summer break with the craziness of travel. Um, we'll be talking in, at Great Heights about violence, about our culture's obsession with it, about how damaging it is. Uh, and if you want to come tonight, I'd encourage you to watch last week's sermon because we'll be talking about that one a little bit more than this one. It's on our YouTube channel or on our Facebook page. If you'd like to join us for that at Great Hyde Brewery 5 to 7, uh, should be a good setting for that conversation. Um, those are the announcements for today. I invite you to stand in body or in spirit as we join our voices together in our closing hymn. Forgot to mention, uh, at lunch, 
We'll have reports from our folks who are delegates to annual conference, talk a little bit about what happened there. We're not going to take up all your time because fellowship is really important, but to, we'll be there and able to answer questions and give a short report about that. Uh, so I'm going to have a double thing here. Our benediction will also be a prayer over lunch because I have learned if I'm standing here shaking hands and people get ready to eat and they're like, but the preacher didn't pray for the food, it's a whole deal. So here now, both a blessing uh, for the world you go out into and the meal that some of us will eat together. God, wherever we go and whatever we do, we ask for your blessing, that you would sustain us through food and friendship, through relationship, through the love you have for us today and every day. And as we go out into this world alive with the Holy Spirit, help us to know that you are guiding us to connect with those who are different than us, like us, and everyone in between. Go in peace.